banishing fear permanently. Some people can talk all around the thing, finally bring out the point. But to me, it seems quite obvious in the case of this subject, banishing fear permanently, that there's just one reason why we fear at all. You may say, oh, it's lack of faith. Certainly it's lack of faith. You must increase your faith. You must increase your faith in God. But still, that does not take away from the one fundamental fact. Why do we fear? We fear because we feel separated from God. That's all. If you can feel your oneness with God, if you can feel that you're one with the master of the universe, do you think you'll have any fear? You think you'll lack any faith? So let us be realistic. We fear because we feel separated from God. We feel separated from that one omniscience of his great presence, which is our very life, our very spirit, our very being. That's why we fear. And so, to banish fear permanently is to make that omniscience of God, that unity of his one consciousness, beyond this duality of existence to make that dynamic to our being. If we can do that, we will never fear again. So there in a few words, you have the question, why do we fear? And you have the answer. We fear because we feel separated from what we really are, the omniscience of God. And to do away with fear permanently, we must make that omniscience of God dynamic to our consciousness. Theoretically, we know that God is in us. We know God has created all things. We know he is our very life. We know these things theoretically. But we have to make them our own. We have to emerge in his omniscience. And knowing that, being one with that, and it's dynamic to our being, then we will not feel separated from him. As long as we live an outward consciousness of duality and do not know the omniscience of God as, as a reality, we will feel separated from him. But when? When through following, one is our beloved guru who gave us the ways and the means to know the omniscience of God, when by following that we feel and know it, then we can really say and know, thou and I, thou and I, never apart, and know it. That's what true self-realization is. So realize that one thing, don't be confused by fear. There are all sorts of fears. I'll talk a little bit about it, but I don't want you ever to forget this one thing, that you fear for that reason. Because if you knew God was with you and there was no separation from his presence in you, you would not fear. Now, our duty and why we're here on earth is to reestablish that, make that dynamic to our being, the omniscience of God's great presence. And by that I mean his power and especially his love. God is love. God is love. And so, right at this time, let me give you a Bible reading which points this out most wonderfully. In 1 John, the fourth chapter, the 16th and 17th verses, where we read as follows. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. You want to know the omniscience of God? Know his love. Let it flow through you by following the way which the master has left. Let's get away from petty things. Follow what he has left you. Meditate regularly. Make God your own. Know God is love. And then as it says, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Will you fear if you know God is love and really know it? No. 
And the 17th verse, herein is our love made perfect. We all have love in our heart, but it's imperfect. Why? Because it's attached to outward consciousness, outward living, with all its implication. But that love of God within us is perfect. And so if we merge in it, make it our own, then as the scripture says, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as is, so are we in the world. That is, if you know God is in you and you feel his love, you will have the boldness to overcome anything. And fear is, as it says, in this world. Fear is of, of this world. But if we have God's love, we can overcome the world, as Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so the answer to fear is to know the omniscience of God which, when reduced to its finality, is love. God is love. And finally, the 18th verse. And let us never forget this little verse now. This is the answer to your question. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Why? Because love is of the omniscience of God, the unity of consciousness, Fear is not in that unity. Fear is in the duality of consciousness, outward living. That's why it says there is no fear in love because love is God's omnipresent consciousness. Fear is in the region of duality, mundane consciousness, outward consciousness, the consciousness which we have to endure every day, at least part of the day. Those who meditate, get out of it. Get out of it in their meditation and feel the presence of God. So realize there is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. We fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Isn't that wonderful? So now if you fear, God's love is not perfect in you. That's how you can tell when the next time you feel something, you begin to fear it, lift your consciousness to this point, feel the presence of God's love, and when fear goes, know that you are in God's love. God is love, and in that love, fear cannot exist. Now I have here a lot of different kinds of fear. Just for a little diversion, we have fear, loss of money and wealth, loss of friends, loss of position, fear of accident. Something's going to happen to me. All kinds of fear. Loss of dear one, fear of death. And so all these fears, all these fears find fruition where? In outward consciousness, you understand? And when you harbor these fears, whatever they are, you render yourself more liable for that thing to happen. You reduce your resistance, and your greatest resistance is what? The presence of God in you. If you feel that, 99 out of 100 of the fears which you have will not come. Because in God's presence, in his unity of consciousness, they cannot exist. There's no fear in God's omnipresence. The fear is an outward consciousness, duality of consciousness. And that's why we're in trouble all the time, because we stay in that outward consciousness. We do not, through meditation, know the one omniscience of God. And you know, and I know, many fears have no need to be in us at all. One story comes to my mind, and this is a true story. I cannot tell it as well as Mr. Layton, because he's Scotch. <laughs> I have some in me, but not as much as he has. But this is the story, and this is a true story showing how foolish we can be as far as fear goes, and how they're unfounded. There was a little girl I was talking to out on the a, on a stoop in front of the house where I lived in Arlington, Massachusetts. 
This is a fact. She's just a little tot, I think about four years old. And we were talking, and there was an airplane circling around overhead. Oh, it must have been a thousand feet up. Pretty soon the mother came out and she says, and she says, come in out of there before that airplane falls on you. <laughs> and she took the girl by the hand and the last vision I have was the little tot going in through the door with her hands this way, the mother pulling her in. So that fear, you see, was so unnecessary. And you'll find if you investigate your own fears that a good many of them are like the fear that the airplane would fall on little Anne. Well, it had a chance, but it was a very remote chance. And so the chance of these things happening to you are very remote, especially if you will know the omniscience of God. We fear that we will lose our dear ones. We will lose them if we view them in outward consciousness. If we think of each other now as we see each other, we're going to lose every one of us is going to lose the other. But if we see in each and every one of us the omniscience of God, his great light and his love flowing through, and feel it, we will not be lost to one another. Nothing is lost in God. And so it behooves us to know that omniscience of God, to realize that. And if we can follow the teachings of self-realization, which the Master has left, even death must pass away. Even the fear of death will pass away, because as you follow and become one with the omniscience of God, realize that that's your very existence, your very life. Then you know you cannot die. You know your consciousness is immortal. Knowing that, what are you going to fear? And so I say, in the name of common sense and reality, let's realize that our only hope to overcome this thing called fear and uproot it and banish it permanently is to go where it doesn't exist, isn't it? It doesn't exist in God. If you are in the light of God and feel his great light and his love and feel the master's presence and all the great ones there, if your body is taken away, are you going to know it even? It's worth it. It's worth it. We must do it. We must banish fear forever, permanently, by knowing that state of our own being, which we are, the omniscience of God, in which fear does not exist. These are most wonderful things. Now... You can listen to me from now until next week if I'd stay here. It won't do you any good unless you go home and do these things, realize these things. And you have the ways and the means if you're not members of self-realization. For heaven's sakes, join. Join and know the way. Try it. Then you can say it is good or it isn't good. But don't judge self-realization until you practice it at least 30 years or more as I have. <laughs> and so <clears throat> we find this one thing to remember is that fears exist please remember this I am just trying to help you as I've been helped and as I was very fearful very sensitive until the master got a hold of me and shook me and waked me up and said get busy no God and then your fears will go and realize that fear is found in outward consciousness, duality of consciousness, worldly consciousness, but in God's omniscience, fear cannot exist. Will you re remember those two things? If you're troubled with fear, try hard to lift your consciousness to this point by all the will you can muster together, and especially using the techniques which the master's left, and then you will find fear cannot stay there. Fear cannot exist in the omniscience of God. And so, to banish fear permanently, we must <laughs> live with our center, not in outward consciousness, but in the omniscience of God's presence within us. We must realize that eternal consciousness within. If we can do that, then fear will be banished permanently. I have a, a little note here, which is most interesting from Brother Lawrence, which many of you have read, the Master used to quote him, in which he says, the presence, practice of the presence of God contains the whole spiritual life. Isn't that wonderful? 
the practice of the presence of God. If you want to banish fear permanently, get God contact. Get to contact with the omniscience of God. That's the whole spiritual life. And if you have that, fear cannot exist there. So there you have the answer, friend, for banishing fear permanently. If someone gives you a great big sum of money, say a million dollars, fear will go, but it'll come back. You're going to afraid you'll be afraid you'll lose that million. But if you have God and somebody gives you the million, wonderful. They can take the million or keep it. It doesn't make a bit of difference. These are facts. You read the master's life. He says that very thing. He said, the devil tempted me many times to leave the self-realization work. And I could make millions. And I know he could because the master was smart. But he said, I wouldn't have God. Having God, I have everything. Because my father has all things. And so let us realize, as all the prophets have said, Practice the presence of God. Or as Master said, <coughs> attain God contact through merging in his presence which is within us as the great holy vibration, the word. We have the ways and the means. Let us do it. Now one or two other things, one or two other things I want to point, especially this one thing. As Brother Lawrence says, the practice of the presence of God is the sum total of spiritual life. That's right. But how many can do that? He wrote these things back in, I believe, 1893 or 5. How many can practice the presence of God? He said, you need no other equipment. But the master came and gave us the ways and the means to practice the presence of God. You understand why self-realization is so important. He gives us the ways and the means, the technique, whereby we can practice the presence of God. Having that, knowing his one omniscient consciousness, fear cannot stay. <coughs> fear cannot exist there. So let us not forget. We may be tempted as we read uh, the lives of certain saints or certain things. They say, just do this, just do that. But it's difficult. But the master makes it easy. That's why he came, to make it easy for you and, and for me to practice being in and merging in the omniscience of God. In that, fear cannot exist. Now another point <coughs> which I'd like to bring out is this. I've heard a lot about faith. If you fear, increase your faith. Well, that's all right. But that's easier said than done. But if you practice being one with the presence of God within you, if you practice being in his omniscient consciousness by God contact, then your faith will increase automatically. Do you understand? We must not get the cart before the horse. We must realize that faith, of course, is necessary to banish fear. But some people can't have faith. But if we practice the techniques of self-realization and know the omniscience of God, faith in its fullness come. So realize that. Of course, I know in the beginning you must have blind faith. I know that. I realize that. If you fall on the ground, you put your hand on the ground to get up, don't you? So you've got to have a little faith uh, to start with. But if you want to have that faith which takes away all fear and gives you that peace which passeth all understanding, you must practice being in God. You must practice <coughs> being one with his omniscient love. That's what Brother Lawrence meant by the practice of the presence of God. But the wonderful thing is the Master sacrificed his life, his all, that you and I might have the ways and the means to know that presence of God, knowing that you will have banished fear permanently. Fear cannot remain where it cannot exist, can it? It is not in God's omniscient consciousness. Try it. Meditate and get that oneness with God. Fear will not be there. Because as I read in the scripture, perfect love casteth out all fear. Now, we have the example of faith 
in little children. Children, you see them going along with full faith in their parents. And having that full faith in their parents, they have no fear. And so a man of realization, a man who knows the omniscience of God, he has the same faith, but his faith is in reality. The child's faith will be lost when the parents go away. We all know that. But he who puts his faith in the one eternal Father and his omniscience, that faith will never be lost. Because God does not pass away. Do you see the difference? And as we had the faith in our parents, let us so live with the faith in the one great father. Your father, my father, who does not pass away. That's what we must never forget. And so these lessons are brought to us that we may, through wisdom, follow the right path wherein we are secure safe and above fear. But this cannot be known. This great omniscience of God cannot be known by man's outward instrument of senses, mind, intellect, inference, and so forth. Even Marconi said this, that there is no question that of the inability of science to solve life. Science cannot solve life. And science depends on what? On man's outward consciousness, testimony of the senses, mind, reason, inference, which the scientists use. But to know, to know the reality, to know the omniscience of God, we have to go beyond man's outward instruments to the instrument of his intuition, the intuition of the soul. And we, being made in the image of God, have the necessary instruments to know that our own consciousness is none other than God's consciousness. His omniscience is our own consciousness if we will but merge in it and know it. Man, being made in the image of God, has the necessary equipment. As Sheer Tesserji has said, by the subtle centers of the spine and a thousand ray lotus. He is made that way so that, through the intuition of his soul, he can know that his omniscience is one with God's omniscience, or that God's consciousness is his own consciousness. Some people say, some great teachers, I am God. Well, you know they are. So do I. But if they say, as the Master always said, I never heard him say, I am God. In fact, I heard him take one person to task for saying that. He would say, Father, thou art in me. God is in me. That's right. Now, when you know that, realize that, then there's no feeling of separation from God. That's the whole cause of the whole trouble. The cause of all fear is that we feel separated from God. But when we remove that idea of separation by knowing him, knowing his omniscience through the right method, right practice, and then increase our faith to its fullness, when we know that there is no separation, and we are never left alone. And when you put your consciousness at the Christ center, as the Master often told me, realize you're in the presence of God and no force in the universe can touch you. These are wonderful things. Let us never forget that. And when fear comes, which it will, as long as we're in this outward consciousness, you cannot help it, quickly put your attention there and say, Father, all right, do what you like with me. Here I am. And I won't let go of you. He will never let you down. Realize that. Fear cannot stay. So, to uproot fear permanently, let us realize that we must know and merge in, not know theoretically, we must know and merge in the omniscient presence of God. And there, in that great omniscient, Fear cannot exist. And we can, from our position of oneness with God, we can watch the play go on. We can watch the drama of life with all its ups and downs, its intricacies, and all that goes on in this world existence. From our oneness with his great omniscience, we can watch that unattached. 
But greatest of all, we can watch it knowing that we are not separated from him. Do you see the point? That's the important thing. The drama of life, don't think you're going to stop it. Don't think I'm going to stop it. It's going on. And we have to play it. But we can play it without feeling separated from God. That's the thing. And then no matter what part we play, whether we sweep the floor or whether we're in the main office, who cares? Do you care what you do if you know God is with you and there's no separation between you and his great omniscient consciousness? I don't. And I know you don't. Now that's what the master by my faith in him and by my discipline and by my following him to the best of my ability, taught me and helped me to realize. So let us understand. There's nothing to fear about fear except that we lose our contact with him who put us here and who runs this great cosmic show. And so by being one with God, from his lap of omnipresence. Please realize that. From his great lap of omnipresence, his all-pervading consciousness, his great love, his all-understanding, from that point of view, then we can exemplify, as Jesus said in St. John, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid.